Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about an aquarium pest known as Hydra. Now, when it comes to this kind of pest, um, generally, if you see one, it's, it's fine if you see a couple, that's also okay. It's not one of those aquarium pests where if you see one, it means you probably have many more. And you don't really need to worry about it if you only have a couple. If you do get quite a few hydras in your tank, then it can become an infestation and it can be quite difficult to get rid of. The number one spot you're gonna find them is just on your tank. I'm just gonna quickly talk about how they get into your tank. Um, there are quite a few ways that hydra can be introduced into your tank. Um, the number one way is going to be hitchhiking in on some plants. If you have a live planted aquarium and you go out and buy some new plants um, that don't have a pest free guarantee, then you can definitely get some hydras um, in on your plants as well as snails or any other aquarium pests like that. Um, snails will be the most common, but hydras can definitely come in that way. Hydra can also be introduced into your aquarium um, if you live feed. If you live feed, they can come in that way, um, same way that they can come in on just some regular fish that you're introducing into your aquarium. And then the last way that they can come in, and this is going to be completely bizarre, um, but they can come in through the air. If you previously had an aquarium in your home that had Hydra in it, um, they can release their eggs and they can actually end up in the air, they can dry out and can float around in the air like dust. But now that brings us into our main points. So I'm going to start off with anatomy. Basically a hydra looks like a little squid. <laughs> it is a little polyp, very very hard to see. Um, they're very small and they're almost translucent so their average size is under a centimeter. It basically just has a cylindrical body and then little tentacles on top. These tentacles are right up at the top near the mouth and the part that sticks to the tank is basically a little adhesive pad that kind of works as the foot. Um, but basically this means that their foot is on the side of the glass or wherever they're sitting. The tentacles grab whatever food that they're eating and bring it to the mouth. Hydras do not swim. Um, sometimes their feet, they can kind of create a little air bubble underneath that will rise them up a little bit and they can kind of jump along that way or rise to the surface, but they cannot swim. When it comes to moving around the tank, um, they can almost somersault. Using their sticky feet, they can kind of roll their way along and that is how they move along the glass. When it comes to eating, they eat a lot of small things because they are very small themselves. The tentacles have um, stinging cells and basically these immobilize their prey and then they are able to stop them from swimming away, they cannot escape, and then they can eat them. Um, so their number one source of food is going to be worms, larvae or larvae, I've never known how to pronounce that so I'm sorry, <laughs> um, small crustaceans, small fish if I didn't say that already, they will also eat sick fish. If you have a fish that's maybe on the little bigger side um, but they are sick and they're weak and unable to swim away, they might be able to fall uh, prey to a hydra as well. Um, these stinging cells will not affect us um, simply because they're just too small. Now moving away from diet, I'm going to be discussing the reproduction methods of hydra. Now hydras, their number one way of reproduction is asexual reproduction known as budding. Budding is simply when they grow a little bud on the side of them which then breaks off and that becomes their offspring. It basically it is a genetic copy. Hydra can reproduce many many times like this. They can also reproduce sexually. Basically they'll release their gametes into the water and then the eggs will become fertilized and the eggs are what actually can end up in the air um, mentioned in the beginning of the video how they can enter your tank through your air there is also that way but like I said um, budding is the most common form of reproduction for hydra there are a couple of removal methods that I'm going to mention um, some of them are probably more humane than others and some of them are a little bit more tedious than others I'm gonna start with the easiest method and then I'm going to finish with the most complicated method now the first method is if you only have a couple in your tank, it doesn't quite qualify as an infestation. And if you only have a couple, the population will generally stay at bay or slowly disappear on its own without you really having to do anything. So definitely the simplest method. Now the next method, and if this is suitable for you, it is definitely another extremely easy method. And that is introducing fish into your aquarium that will eat the hydra. 
Now, what I mean by whether or not this is doable is basically if the fish that I'm about to mention are compatible with the fish that you already have in your aquarium. If they aren't compatible, then you might have to do one of the other methods that I'll mention next. But the fish that you can introduce that will like to feast on hydra is going to be mollies. Um, mollies will love to feast on them. Guppies as well. Guppies will also feast on hydra on the side of the tank. Um, one fish that loves to eat on them will be blue gorannies. And one last thing that will eat them is pond snails. Now pond snails are technically another aquarium pest, but there are a lot of other fish and snails that will eat them that you might already have in your aquarium already. The next method of removal that I'm going to mention is going to be manual removal. And this is basically removing the ones that you see from your tank. Now, this is a little bit more complicated than it may seem. It actually got its name from Greek mythology, which basically at the Hydra, if you cut its head off, it'll grow back too. Um, it is kind of the same thing with Hydra in your aquarium. If you try to remove it and you don't remove all parts of the Hydra, for example, if you just kind of chip it away with your nail or maybe you just squish it, um, that is not gonna kill it. It's either going to create an infestation or cause your infestation to worsen. Um, because all those little bits of hydra will now grow into separate hydras. So that's definitely, you want to be very careful when you're choosing this method. Um, the number one way to go about it is to use a razor blade. Just take a razor blade, scrape it off, and then quickly come along with a gravel vacuum and suck it up off the bottom. Um, that way everything stays intact, it is removed cleanly off the side of your aquarium, now the last method that I'm going to choose, and this is always going to be my last resort when I mention removal methods for any kind of aquarium pest, and that is taking the chemical approach. You have to be really careful that whatever you're picking is not going to harm the rest of your fish, um, any invertebrates you might have your tank, um, snails, shrimp, plants, if I didn't say that already. A lot of um, snails and shrimp are very sensitive to chemicals, so when you're trying to combat one thing, you might be hurting your parts of your aquarium ecosystem that you actually really like. Um, if you are going the chemical route, it is recommended that you use a deworming chemical. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought it would be fun to make to teach you a little bit more about an aquarium pest that you might find in your tank. A lot of times when you find something in your tank that's not supposed to be there that you didn't put in there, um, a lot of times there can be a little bit of panic because you don't know what it is and you're not really sure if it's a bad thing, if it's a good thing and how to go about it. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of insight on how to deal with it if you find one in your tank in the future um, or if you have them in your tank right now and you were looking for this video, um, hopefully it eases your concern a little bit. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye guys.